everyone. I have here one of your local TV stars. Tom Randalls, how are you? I'm fine. Good to see you again. Sean. Good to see you. I miss seeing you around, man. Well, you know, we, we used to bump into each other all the time, but At not the anymore. Yeah. But I can see you've been busy. Yeah, I've been busy with the show, you know, keeping it on, you know, working hard. But you've been working hard too. A little bit. A so little bit. what time do you find time to do music? Uh, usually late into the night into the next day. So since I'm a, a news anchor and I do the late news, when I get off, that's when I really start being creative. Uh, some of the recording sessions on this album, Destination Music City, uh, we started after midnight and we weren't done with the song until 5, 6, 7 a.m. the next day. Wow. And I had to get up and go to work, you know, to still do the news. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a labor of love. But, but I don't mind. <laughs> it really is a labor of love. Yeah, but but how would you? When do you rest, though? When? Not enough. What do you do to not look sleepy on camera? Some, sometimes <laughs> sleep doesn't matter. Sometimes okay. sleep doesn't matter. When you're doing something you really love, yeah, that's and you're passionate true. about, you know, you can forego sleep. You can forego eating. Uh, you might not feel that great, but but you're doing something that invigorates you, that gives you energy. Wow, wow, I'm, I'm so, well, I'm kind of like you, so I, what, am I, what am I kidding? So, <laughs> or who am I kidding? Because <laughs> sometimes I got two, three projects going on oh, at the sure. same time and I work on late at night. So I totally you understand. understand you. So tell me about Music City Destination, Destination yeah. Music City. Well, this is a project I've been working on for a couple of years and it's taken that long because I am a professional broadcaster. So. I wasn't able to get people into the studio to work on my projects, you know, on a timely basis. I had to take people when I could get them. For example, um, Kenny Anderson, who played saxophone on this project for me on two songs. Uh, he's played with a lot of very famous people. Gloria Stefan of Miami Sound Machine, um, Arturo Sandoval, uh, you know, Tower Power. He's How do you get him to play for you? Here's what's funny. <laughs> He contacted me. Really? He contacted me at the television station and just basically said he enjoyed watching me uh, and just wanted to just say hi. And then I researched him and found out that he was that Kenny Anderson. Oh my the, the goodness. The famous Kenny Anderson. And we struck up a friendship. Um, and he came off a tour. He was touring with Larry Carlton, the great jazz guitarist in Japan um, and last year and during the summertime. And he came off a tour and said, Tom, I." I'm here for two days, and then I'm back on the road, and I'm heading to New York. So if you if you can get me into the studio, you know we can work on your, your project. That's oh, kind of wow. how I've had to do the project. Take these musicians as they come. Jim Williamson is another one. Jim is the director of the Nashville Jazz Orchestra. He's played with Aretha Franklin, The Temptations, Michael McDonald, uh, and the list goes on and on. And Jim was a friend of Kenny's, wow. and so when I told Kenny that I had a song I'd written for trumpet. He said, well, I know somebody. And, and, he, <laughs> and he introduced me to, to Jim. And that's how it kind of works here in Music City. The connections, yes. you know, the people like that. So yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So this is a star-studded CD. Well, yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I think so. It's got some star power on it. it yes, it really yes. Does. And let me tell you, I listened to it like four times because I'm, I'm a jazz lover. Oh, good. So when you gave me this, I said, I can't wait to hear it. So I kept playing it over and over and over. And before this one, you gave me the other one. And I kept playing it over and over and over because it's such a great work. Oh, thank you so much. You're very welcome. I, I, didn't, I did not pay you to say that, right? <laughs> no, I truly, I truly love jazz. Um, you know, Cuba. Right, we are jazz lovers. So I grew into it, you know, in my country. And I, here I just keep buying CDs and more jazz. And I listen to jazz a, a lot of times. It's, it is a, um, a type of music genre. Uh, that touches everybody and yeah. it doesn't matter where you live in the world mm -hmm. um, since we're just launching this project I'm finding out that um, there are stations already who are playing it in Buenos Aires uh, in Brazil wow. um, over in the UK um, and I was up really late last night mm -hmm. just corresponding to some of these people to thank them for you know playing my music and downloading it and experimenting with it um, so so it's it's fun it's jazz is fun and you know what I love about you is that you are not a star that is unreachable. That's right. That I'm very people, approachable. Yeah. 
I was really like struck when one day I got a text from him and said, hey, how you doing? It was like a very casual, hello. So I really love that about you, well, that you're you. very reachable. I, I like people, I do. Uh, sometimes it gets me in trouble because, you know, we all have those moments when we might be trying to get some work done. Yeah. And if you're in a public setting, you know what happens. You know, someone wants to come up and say hi. And, yeah. and I, love, I love that when people do that. But it happens so often, people will see me and they'll go, I know you're busy, or I know you're eating, or I know... <laughs> but I just want to say hello. <laughs> or, or I know you're on the phone, but I just want to say hi. And, and, and I am completely fine with that. Because you know what? If they did not recognize me, uh, that means they're not watching. Yeah. And if they're not watching, I'm unemployed. So. Yes, they, they love you. We all love you. So tell me about the Grand Ole Opry. Well, the Grand Ole Opry, um, that one came out of the blue as well. Uh, Pete Fisher, um, who runs the Grand Ole Opry, contacted me one day and said, would you like to play the Grand Ole Opry? And I, at first I thought it was a joke. So I looked at the email <laughs> and I'm like, the Grand Ole Opry, really? He's pulling it, my leg. <laughs> it's, it's not April 1st. Um, and and I, I, I called him back and I said, well, yes, so tell me more. And he said, well, we're going to invite you on one of our bigger nights where we have a bunch of our stars performing and we have a guest celebrity musician who always plays the opera. Um, actor Kevin Costner has done it. Um, also Steve Martin. Both of those guys are musicians and very accomplished musicians. So <clears throat> when they ask a celebrity musician to come, I was very honored that number one, Pete put me in the category of being a celebrity, and number two, that he thought my musicianship was good enough to play on the Ryman stage and play the Grand Ole Opry. Wow. So that was kind of scary. I mean, I, I played with Hank Williams' daughter, Holly Williams. Um, you know, she's country royalty. So to get an opportunity to play with her was quite exciting and scary at the same time. <laughs> I bet. Uh, so when did you make time to do live performances? You know, Again, I, people, doing this and live performances? People ask me that all the time. And unfortunately, because I, I do work I work, you know, four evening broadcasts a day. I anchor a five o'clock newscast, a six o'clock newscast, a six thirty newscast, and a ten o'clock newscast. And by the time that's over and I'm really kind of done at the station, it's eleven o'clock or after eleven o'clock at night. By the time I'm done with emails and getting things ready for the next day, so most of the places where I would want to go and play, they're yeah. winding down. They're not gearing up. Yeah. So. Um, if I have an off day or I happen to be, you know, out on a Saturday night somewhere and somebody sees me, they might invite me to come up and play and say, hey, Tom, Tom's in here. Come on up on stage. That's that's really about the only time I have to perform is when somebody invites me up to play. Wow. I, I miss it. I used to play a lot when I was younger. But, uh, You're still young. You well, still can play around. <laughs> thank you. You're such a kind friend. <laughs> it's with love that I say that. Thank you. Okay. So, um, are you going to be able to tour or do anything with this city, or are you just going to promote it as you go? We're, we're what, gonna, what's the plan? We're going to see what happens. I've got um, some really good friends, you included, you know, who are helping get the word out about the project. So, um, we're going to see where it goes, um, maybe how, how many people receive it and, and start playing it and want to hear it, uh, and then, I'll, then I'm going to evaluate all of that, but I'm not going to give up broadcasting. Broadcasting has been really, really good to me. It's allowed me to do things like, like this. Yes. So, um, and there have been other people who've been able to manage both. Um, John Tesh, who used to work here in Nashville on television, is a good example. You know, he's somebody who was a great broadcaster, but also a musician, and was, and was able to balance both and, and do both. So we'll see, but as of right now, I don't have a band. This was a studio project, uh, and, and I had a lot of fun composing and writing the music. But in terms of being able to perform and get out on the road, uh, that's that's a different animal, and that will that will have to be a different level, and I'll have to, you know, Maybe really take think a vacation. About it. Yeah, there you go. Take, take a, vaca a vacation. Take from a vacation TV and, and go, go on the road. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> And then I come and do a behind the scenes. Right. <laughs> and you would too. <laughs> yes. Yes. So um, for you jazz lovers, I highly recommend it. Uh, Tom 
Randall's Destination Music City new CD is amazing. You're gonna love it. You can play it during the parties or you're just having a glass of wine at home, relaxing. This is a great project. So you go and get your copy now. Do you, do you have a favorite song? Do you have one favorite song? I don't have a favorite. Well, I love them good. all. That's good. Good. I love them all. They are so great. I mean, they, I'm, I'm a big fan of the... Um, Saxophone? Uh, the saxophone, so all the saxophone, saxophone solos. Good job, like, Kenny. Oh Good God. job, Kenny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I love it, and um, I hope that a lot of people buy your CD because it's amazing. So make sure you go get your copy. You can get it on uh, TomRendles.com. Is it on iTunes yet? It's on iTunes and Amazon.com. Most of the online retailers have it. CDBaby.com. I have a really good relationship with them. They sell a lot of music for me. Um, and just go to my website and you'll have links to be able to find the music. Thank you so much for coming again to Entertainment Circle and sit down with Fela Bass. Thank you. The hot Latina in town. <laughs> <laughs> you got that, that right. <laughs> yeah, that's too much information from myself to myself. <laughs> You're a mess. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay in tune with us for more Entertainment Circle.